Even if you're not the prettiest, celebrate your sister's wedding. The groom is your ex-fiance, but... What? I don't have a sister, though. Huh? Thomas, my ex-fiance, who left me for my beautiful sister Mia, smugly said this to me. He can't seem to help himself from mentioning his past relationships. Actually, Mia and I are... What? You're kidding, right? Seems like he had some misunderstandings, so I decided to tell Thomas the truth. This led to a huge fight between Thomas and Mia right before their wedding. Mia tried her best to calm things down, and they did get married, but I somehow ended up being the center of attention at their wedding, which infuriated Mia. It wasn't my fault, though. Thomas and Mia kept bothering me after their wedding, so I had to set them straight. My name is Natalie, 27 years old, and I work for a company. I had a boyfriend for six years. His name is Thomas, 33 years old. Thomas is a stage actor, but unfortunately he's not very successful. We met when I was still a college student. I was invited to a play in which my college friend was performing, and Thomas was also in it. Thomas apparently saw me from the stage and approached me after the show. I was scared at first since he was six years older. I still remember that. You looked so cute from the audience. Thomas came on strong and I was wary. I'd been called unattractive before, but never cute. My friend protected me then, and I left without giving my contact information. But Thomas later found my social media and messaged me. I rejected him immediately. However, Thomas didn't give up easily and kept bothering my friend for my phone number. I didn't want to trouble my friend anymore. Just when I was thinking about what to do, another message came through social media. Thomas had created another account to contact me. I finally gave in and agreed to dinner, just once. You are more beautiful than any woman I've ever seen. Please stop, I've never been told that, so I don't know how to react. Thomas was the kind of man who could say such things effortlessly. Throughout that date, he kept complimenting me. My voice, my fingers, my hair, even saying I smelled nice. He complimented everything about me. It was the first time I had met a man like that. As much as it hurt to admit, by the time we parted, I found myself wanting to see him again. I lacked self-confidence. I was abandoned in second grade and raised in an orphanage. I never felt at home from the moment I became aware of my surroundings. My mom never praised me, always saying, I wish you were never born. So I thought I was unworthy of love. I probably just wanted someone's approval. Thomas filled that need in just one day. By then, I think I was already falling for him. We started dating naturally after he asked me out a few more times. However, Thomas, who had once filled my need for approval, changed over six years. You're the girlfriend of an actor, right? At least put on makeup when you're outside. I am wearing makeup. Really? With makeup like that? Aren't you aging too fast? Thomas had started to criticize my appearance, and he had ulterior motives for dating me. I'm kind of in a pinch this month. Again? The month just started. Well, it's important for an actor to socialize, right? He calls himself an actor, but it's self-proclaimed. He hasn't had any stage work in a year. He's barely working part-time jobs and often skips work. I want you to pay back what you owe me. Why? We're going to get married, aren't we? You don't have to pay me back. I was 27 and vulnerable to the word marriage. But I had been hearing this from Thomas for the past three years. Deep down, I knew Thomas had no intention of marrying me. But he was all I had. I thought I would never meet someone else who would accept me. That's how I felt. And so I ended up lending money that I knew wouldn't come back even on this day. Oh, and by the way, you entered my apartment when I wasn't there, right? Yeah, I did. Don't do that anymore. Why? You used to let me in normally. My actor friends might be staying over. I don't want you to be attacked by them. They're frivolous guys, you know. So always contact me before coming to my place. Okay. Six months ago, he took my spare key, and now he's telling me to contact him before coming over. It felt like a step back from marriage. I knew he hid a key under the doorbell, so I occasionally used it to sneak in for cleaning, laundry, or cooking. He never said anything before, so why now? Maybe he didn't like it. My anxiety grew. Recently, I started confiding in a senior colleague at work about Thomas. 
His name is Joseph, 30 years old. Joseph noticed the scant filling in my sandwich and expressed his concern. I was eating in a hidden spot because I was embarrassed, but he noticed, and I felt even more embarrassed. Our company doesn't pay that badly, right? I'm just saving money. My evasion was quickly seen through, and I ended up talking about Thomas. Talking about it surprisingly cleared my mind, and since then I often sought advice. But recently... You should break up with that guy as soon as possible, I was told bluntly. I know I should, but I can't bring myself to leave Thomas. It's embarrassing. I finally decided it was time to take a stand. I told Thomas I wanted to talk when he visited my house. What's up? I'm starving here. Thomas came over for food and money. With that in mind, I gathered my courage and spoke. Don't you think it's time we start thinking about our future after six years together? The future? Thomas looked genuinely displeased. I felt I shouldn't waste any more time. If you can't see a future with me, let's break up. What? I want to break up with you. Your stuff is packed. Take it with you. I'll pick mine up tomorrow. When I said this, Thomas suddenly panicked. Wait, is this some kind of joke? I'm serious. Seeing my earnest face, Thomas grasped my hand suddenly. Okay, let's get engaged. What? Wait for the ring. I don't have the money right now. I don't need a ring. I received an unexpected proposal from Thomas. Natalie, will you marry me? Thomas made a ring from a straw and placed it on my finger. I was so surprised that I started to cry. Are you serious? Of course. I love you, Natalie. I don't want to lose you. I believed his words completely. I was over the moon thinking Thomas was really considering marrying me. So we were officially engaged. The world around me seemed to change. It was as if a fog had lifted. I spent the next few days in bliss. I even forgot something at Thomas's house because I was so elated. It was an important document I needed for work the next day. I decided to go get it without contacting him, as it was an audition day. I thought he wouldn't notice as I was picking up the document and would leave immediately. Besides, we were now engaged. I interpreted the situation differently than a few days ago. I went to get the key, but it wasn't in its usual spot. Then I heard voices inside. At first, I thought it was his actor friends visiting, but it seemed different. The reason was that lewd voices were audible even from outside. It was definitely Thomas's voice. Curiosity got the better of me, and I gently turned the doorknob. It was unlocked. Aren't you going to tell her soon? Yeah, might as well milk her for more money before dumping her, right? Bad boy. They were undoubtedly talking about me. I was convinced that Thomas was cheating and burst into the house. They were on the bed. What is the meaning of this? I expected Thomas to be flustered, but instead he got angry. I told you to call before coming. Why did you just show up? The woman looked at me with a smug smile. Even as the situation was exposed, the woman calmly dressed without panic. I looked at her face and realized I recognized her. It's been a while, Natalie. How do you know my name? Oh, you forgot. Unpleasant memories are hard to forget, even when you want to. My brain brought back those memories. This was from before I went to the orphanage, back in the house where I was mistreated by mom. There was another girl there. Her name was Mia, three years younger than me. The girl in front of me was indeed that girl from back then. Mom adored Mia. As a child, Mia was cute and smart, a quick learner, and mom's pride. Watching Mia like that, Mom judged me as a failure because I was always slower. Moreover, I apparently looked like Dad, whom Mom hated for leaving her. Mia always watched me being mistreated by Mom with a sarcastic smile. That face from then overlapped with her face now. Mia, now 30, was indeed more beautiful, retaining traces of that girl. When I heard you were her sister, I was shocked. You two look nothing alike. You're ugly. What? But Thomas, you said I was cute. Huh? I don't remember saying that. Be careful. She's always been a pathological liar. 
Really? That's scary. Their laughter triggered more memories. Mom and Mia often laughed at me like that. I left the place as if running away. My breathing became erratic, not just because I was running. For those six years, I believed in Thomas's words. Thomas was the only one who accepted me. But now, betrayed, I was lost. Everything turned dark. The next day, I told Joseph about it. He listened in silence. As I spoke, I calmed down and clearly realized that the engagement was also a lie. And finally, I understood that there was no point in staying with Thomas. The next day, I contacted Thomas to demand repayment of the money. That was something you lent me because you wanted to. Why should I repay? It was under the promise of marriage. Now that it's off, it's only fair you pay me back. No way. I don't intend to pay you back. There's no proof you lent me anything, so I don't owe you. In the end, I couldn't get the money back. I had no choice but to give up. We had been together for six years, but never lived together. If we had cohabited for six years, I might have been able to claim as common-law wife, but that wasn't our case. Instead, I had initially given him money, so I couldn't demand repayment. Hiring a lawyer was an option, but that would cost more money. Don't show up in front of me again. Mia doesn't like it. You took so much of my time. I can't forgive you. Yeah, yeah, don't forgive me. It's fine. Thomas waved me off as if shooing away a stray cat. Months passed. I was trying to recover from the heartbreak by immersing myself in work. Focusing on something helped me forget. I worked late that day, and when I got home, I found a wedding invitation in my mailbox. Wondering who it could be, I opened it up, and it was from the two people I most wanted to forget. An invitation to the wedding of Thomas and Mia. They even included a photo of themselves, probably just in my envelope. I was about to throw the invitation in the trash when the phone rang, perfectly on cue. The number was Thomas's, which I remembered even though it wasn't saved. What do you want? Don't sound so scary, jeez. If you don't have anything to say, I'm hanging up. Wait, wait, you're so impatient. Come to our wedding, will you? As I suspected, that was the topic. I was exasperated. Why should I attend the wedding of my former fiancé? While I was thinking about how to end the call quickly. Even if you're ugly, you should celebrate your sister's wedding. The groom is your ex-fiancé, but... What? I don't have a sister, though. Huh? Then Thomas burst into laughter. I didn't understand what was so funny. That was at my house the other day. You're talking about Mia. I know that. Then don't tell such pointless lies about not having a sister. I'm not lying. Thomas started to get irritated. I realized I might have to explain properly, as this was going nowhere. We're not family anymore, so I have no obligation to attend the wedding. I've set up a seat for you. What, don't you want to see Mom, who abandoned you? It's not like that, okay? I'll tell you. Actually, Mia and I are not blood-related. Mia is the daughter of my mom and her previous husband. I was Dad's child from another relationship, but Dad left Mom and abandoned me, too. So I have no blood relation with Mom, either. For a while, Mom kept me around as an excuse for Dad to come back. But after two years, I became a nuisance. That's when I was taken to the orphanage. So I have no blood relation to Mia. But you have the same last name. That's because Dad and Mia's mom divorced right after she started elementary school, and she was raised without changing her name. So Mia's mom has a different surname. Thomas finally seemed to understand. So I have no reason to attend the wedding. I'm not family. I wasn't told about this. That's your problem, not mine. Thomas had believed I was Mia's real sister. Probably Mia had fed him lies about me, too. When did you first see Mia? About half a year ago. That long? So you've been cheating for half a year? Yeah, well, it's... Let's forget about it. It's in the past. Realizing it had been going on for so long made me almost explode with anger. It was bad enough to be deceived, but I couldn't stand that Thomas easily trusted someone he met only six months ago over me, after six years together. I felt my feelings for him cooling off. 
I'm glad you called today. Thank you. What's this? Thanking me? Creepy. It helped me lose all feelings for you. What's that supposed to mean? Why had I needed Thomas so much until now? It wasn't that I loved Thomas. I was just happy to be acknowledged by someone. I finally realized that. Proof of this was that even when Thomas was deceived by Mia, I felt nothing. I couldn't bring myself to think of helping him no matter what happened next. If you can't sympathize with someone, it's not love or anything else. I'm just a stranger to all of you now, so please don't contact me again. I said that, ended the call, and blocked his number. However, a few days later, Mia appeared in front of me. She caught me as I was leaving work, probably having asked Thomas for my workplace. You. You said unnecessary things to Thomas. I just told him the truth because he seemed to think that we were real sisters. Thanks to you, I'm being called a liar now. After our call, Thomas repeatedly tried to call me back. Mia saw him doing this, and when she asked what was wrong, he suddenly lashed out, saying, This liar woman, you embarrassed me because of her. After hearing this, Mia apologized. She managed to calm Thomas down and avoided a broken engagement. Still, I couldn't understand why she wanted to marry Thomas so badly. You made things difficult for me by saying unnecessary things. That's a natural consequence, isn't it? I don't care. You always act so cool about everything I do. Be more upset. Excuse me? Mia suddenly expressed her anger at me. Her face was filled with fury. I didn't understand, so I asked her to explain, and she started talking. When I was a child, apparently Dad favored me. Sadly, I don't remember that. Probably Mom used me to get Dad's attention, but to Mia, it felt like I was taking her mom away. So Mia worked hard in her studies and was well-behaved to get attention. But still, Dad seemed to favor me. She couldn't stand that. But when Dad left, Mom suddenly turned cold towards me. To Mia, that felt comforting. She found pleasure in seeing Mom mistreat me and me getting hurt. But when you went to the orphanage, I missed seeing that and felt bored. Then one day, about 20 years later, Mia saw me walking happily with Thomas. Hearing Thomas call me cute was unbearable for her. I can't stand you being happier than me. That's when Mia decided to steal Thomas from me. She approached Thomas, claiming to be my sister, and seduced him with her beauty. Mia explained this all triumphantly, but hearing it, I just felt pity for her. You must be really bored. What did you say? Well, isn't it true? You've been holding on to this for 20 years since I left home. That's a huge waste of time. Mia was furious at my words. She lunged at me. Joseph, who happened to come out, saw this. He rushed over to us. What are you doing? Joseph stood protectively in front of me. Mia looked at him, surprised, and suddenly quieted down. Natalie, who's this? He's a senior colleague from work. Mia then started to look unsettled, probably because Joseph was handsome. I'm Mia, her sister. Sister? Actually, I have a wedding coming up, but my sister says she won't come. That's causing me some trouble. Then Joseph, as if pondering, said something unbelievable to Mia. Can I attend that wedding too? What? Of course you're welcome. I'll reserve a seat for you. Please, make sure my seat is next to Natalie. Joseph said this with a smile, and Mia's eyes turned completely into hearts. After Mia left, I complained to Joseph, but he just winked at me, saying he had a plan. I was amazed to see how self-centered the men around me were. And then, the day of the wedding arrived. I never intended to go, but there I was, attending. I had no idea what Joseph was thinking, completely baffled. I entered the wedding venue filled with anxiety. The wedding was garden party style, standing reception. There were no specific seats, so I stood far from the relatives. To my surprise, Joseph perfectly escorted me. Thanks to him, I avoided strange looks, and the relatives and Mia's friends who were talking behind my back were distracted by Joseph. I then reunited with Mom after a long time. Mom looked awkward, but when Joseph spoke to her, she was as smitten as Mia. 
She seemed to mistake him as my boyfriend. She grimaced with envy and glared at me. That's when I realized Joseph was a popular guy. During the wedding while mingling, Mia, now the wife, came to us. Thank you for coming today. You too, Joseph. It's a pleasure to be invited. By the way, Joseph, did you know? The groom is actually Natalie's ex-fiance. Mia started saying this proudly, as if Joseph didn't already know. And Natalie sometimes lies, so please don't be too hard on her. What are you saying? Scary, scary, stop it. Today is my wedding, you know. Don't raise your voice like that. Everyone will be surprised. See, she can't even control her emotions. Then Joseph sighed deeply. I was shocked, thinking that sigh was directed at me. I was torn between wanting to believe he understood me and fearing betrayal like with Thomas. Really? That's unfortunate. Joseph said that, and Mia gave me a smug smile. Poor Natalie, having such an embarrassing sister. What? You should be enjoying the wedding instead of just worrying about your sister. Excuse me? I don't believe others' words. I know Natalie best. I've been watching her since she joined the company. People gathered around us. Even Thomas came over, curious about the commotion. What's going on? Oh, the groom. I wanted to thank you. Thank me? For finally breaking up with Natalie. It gave me a chance. Then Joseph suddenly confessed to me. He fell in love at first sight when I joined the company, gave up because I had a boyfriend, but couldn't let go and had been in love for five years. I was surprised too. Hey, don't do whatever you want at my wedding. That's true. Then we'll take our leave, Joseph said and took my hand, leading me away from the scene. Everybody left behind was stunned. The video of Thomas and Mia being cozy, probably meant to show off to me, went unnoticed, as the guests were more excited about the confession they had just witnessed. I could easily imagine Mia causing a scene during the rest of her wedding. Even Mom said, Mia, why don't you marry someone like Joseph? Furious, Mia called me that night. You're on the phone with me on your wedding night? Shut up! I have to give you a piece of my mind. You invited me. That doesn't mean you can interfere. I didn't interfere. Mia was completely enraged, cutting off my words with her anger. Just leave me alone, will you? I'm not bothering you. I know it's frustrating, but constantly comparing yourself to others is pointless. What do you know about it? I don't, but it's ridiculous to marry a man you don't even love to see me lose something. Ever thought about how you're wasting your life? I could tell Mia was stunned by my words. She hung up without saying anything. It must have been quite a shock to her. For Mia, who had always lived comparing herself to others, this might have been a chance to finally face herself. I hope she lives her life for herself, not just to belittle others. After that, Mia never contacted me again. Mia, having gone through with the wedding, couldn't divorce right away. Plus, the wedding expenses were paid by Mom. She had to repay them. So Mia tried to collect the money from Thomas. Pay half the wedding expenses. What? You think I have that kind of money? But you promised! I told you I didn't want a wedding in the first place. In the end, Thomas didn't pay her back, and their marriage continued for a while. Thomas didn't work, and Mia supported the household. But Mia, not one to be dictated to, finally snapped after six months and presented Thomas with divorce papers. I can't stand this life anymore. With that, she left. So now Thomas, hearing this whole story, has reappeared in front of me. It was a cold winter day. Thomas was waiting at the nearest station to my company. She left me, you know. It's clear now. The only one who can support my acting career is Natalie. Let's start over. Talk in your sleep. What? Thomas still seemed to think I had feelings for him. Once awakened, it's clear how pathetic he is. I feel sorry for having clung to such a man for six years. Look, when are you going to stop talking about being an actor? It's pathetic. You know you're not successful. What's gotten into you? You're not even trying. No woman will devote herself to such a man anymore. I've finally woken up thanks to you leaving me. So thank you. Wait a minute! 
Thomas blocked my way and began a deep apology. I was surprised. I never expected Thomas so full of pride to apologize deeply. Stop it, right here in public? Please, let's start over. I'll treat you right this time. Do you think I can trust those words? Please, I don't want to be alone. At first, I thought he wanted to reconcile just to sponge off a woman, but he also seemed to fear loneliness. After being abandoned by Mia, Thomas was alone, having been shunned by his acting friends for years and without any real friends. He had been disowned by his family when he left home to pursue acting and couldn't return home and he was fired from his job for repeated absences. Fearing true solitude, he became desperate. But hearing this story didn't make me want to forgive him. Moreover, sorry, but I'm engaged. I took off my glove and showed him my engagement ring. After Thomas and Mia's wedding, Joseph asked me to date with marriage in mind. Engaged? You're lying. It's true, I'm sorry. That guy? Don't go with him. Do you have the right to say that? Thomas seemed lost for words. Forget about me. With that, I left. Thomas sat down, stunned. Since then, Thomas has never appeared before me again. Afterwards, Mia returned home, but spent her days being scolded by Mom as shameless. Unable to defy Mom and needing to repay the wedding expenses, Mia worked at a local company for a low salary. Fuming with anger and wondering why she alone had to suffer this fate, Mia contacted Thomas again. Thomas seemed happy at first that Mia had returned, but was disappointed when she demanded payment for the wedding expenses. However, upon being told that she would reconsider their relationship if he paid off the wedding costs, Thomas started working two jobs. From what I heard, Mia had no intention of reconciling and was merely using Thomas. I felt no obligation to tell him so I let them handle it themselves. I had begun planning my wedding to Joseph. With Joseph, I could debate and share joys as he respected my opinions. Our relationship at work remained the same. I managed to continue as normal, but Joseph seemed to find it a bit difficult as things had changed between us. Therefore, I decided to resign when we got married. This was not to accommodate Joseph. This was my own decision. I had always wanted to pursue a certain career, so I decided to go back to school and chase that dream. Being able to openly discuss this was possible only because of Joseph. Of course he was supportive. Joseph accepted me as I am, making me feel very comfortable. He didn't overpraise me, but simply acknowledged me, which I realized made me very happy. My life is just beginning. I'm determined to live it fully and authentically.